Hello. I am going to speed run the shit out of this because I don't have a lot of time, so bear with me. I found this tutorial on how to tune uh, Chevio, I'm pretty sure. It's a good tutorial on tuning, so I thought I'd just rip into it. The whole first section of this video runs through things well and in depth, but I don't have time, so I'm just gonna start straight from here. I wanna show how to use the tips in this tutorial on Utau, and here's my setup here. First time I tried to record this tutorial, I used Xion SL, and I realized that that's a little overkill, so this is Tokumir. His merge bank is just one download, super easy. This graph comes with his README, super easy to understand. I'm just making the UST for this real quickly. I've got, I've, I make my own USTs, uh, but the first step is obviously to get your UST sorted. These first like steps where it's like sort out your UST, get your project file working with all the expressions. You can't quite see it, but I've got a bunch of different um, flags set up here, mainly for more sampler, because it's just easier to have them here ready to go. The next thing is pick the right bank for the song. I am picking this bank because it matches the tutorial. I might deadass just change my mind because I don't know if this sounds any good. That's not bad actually. I'm breaking the first rule which is set your beats per minute because I just don't know what it is and I can't be bothered. Anyway, let's go to the video. Uh, the first thing, it says set up your UST. It's kind of that simple, like seriously. But a lot of, I see a lot of people have the wrong timing, wrong pitch, wrong, wrong lyrics in their UST, especially downloaded from the internet. Make your own, or if you download it, check it. It's a lot easier to make your own, in my opinion, because it forces you to check that everything's correct, whereas if you just download it and plug and play, I appreciate wanting to just get something done, but it's it, it, it annoys me, <laughs> especially if you don't speak Japanese. You're not going to notice when things are wrong in a lot of Japanese songs. That's the other thing. I My own knowledge base really just applies for Japanese banks, so shoot me. Uh, that's kind of what I'm focusing on. Uh, what else? So let's move on. That's pretty easy. I've set up, look, wonderful. The UST is here. Uh, I should probably save. File name, another key mash, that'll do. Okay. This is inherently a problem um, for Utah users. This, the person who makes this tutorial is using an AI bank or something along those lines. I don't really know what voice owner is. Again, shoot me, I don't understand. But we're, we're talking about Utah. So if we look here on this video, you can't see my cursor, but just bear with me. The purple line is the pitch line. And this AI bank has already baked in some pitch variation. And a lot of it, which is kind of classic of AI banks, is just a little bit of like a little variation wavery stuff. So to get that little waveriness, and this depends on the bank and the voicer and how they recorded it, uh, you could just kind of add some modulation. I would start at like 50, put it on everything, see how it sounds. So more often than not, it'll just be off pitch. This one in particular is kind of naff. Actually, sorry. So this is the thing that happens. Uh, I thought it was this note being off pitch, but even though this is like the whole length of the note up here, it's only like this wide down here. It's, the problem is this note, which is a lot longer, Like, but it's this one. Uh, so let's just set that. I like that little off pitchness because it's more natural. Uh, you could probably crank it higher, but I'm not going to because I can't be bothered. Okay, another thing that's happening because it's an AI bank is it's already adding in shit like fries and breaths. We will get to that. I love them. So he's talking about the gaps in between phrases. A musical phrase, you could argue for days about what is a phrase and what isn't, but the way I've set this out at the moment has the four phrases like this, and then you have to consider the lead in and the lead out of each one, and if they're too close together it's just like consider it as like one gap. And in the gaps you can put all these things. Uh, Tokume has a lot of options, which is cool, so that's why I kind of wanted to use him. Uh, Shion SL has more, but not much more than this in terms of special phonemes, as I call them, uh, which is just anything outside of your standard rec list, like end breaths, fry, etc. Set up multiple uh, resamplers, even if it's just like two or three. Um, whatever your base resampler is, it will not cover all ca all cases, especially not fry. Um, macros is really good for fries and growls and stuff. It's kind of too strong. It's gonna be this bank is very very strong coded overall. That's actually nice to be honest. But the timing with these like fry notes is always gonna be a bit difficult. Probably better as it was. 
the crunkliness is an important factor of singing. The, the realism kind of does come from the texture of it. And when people record Utail Banks, they kind of focus on eliminating texture because it does screw with the vast majority of resamples and doesn't come out sounding very good. So you kind of have to add it back in. And that makes, that's fine, as long as you care enough. So, scoops. There's a logic to them. You can't just put them on every note. And there's a logic to making them sound good. First thing is, when I'm starting this phrase, I am bracing my voice to sing this note here. So it's not really going to scoop much because I'm already prepared, but I'm going to come from all the way down here up to here. So this will probably scoop, partly because you have like comfortable spots which you prefer prepare your voice for and then picking a note is kind of adding on top of it. Uh, so this would be probably the comfortable spot that I would go to, but the up swings are the ones who really notice it. So this, this note up here is like adding on top of where the voice is positioned to go. So I'm just gonna give it a scoop. Like that's kind of how it works. Same with this one here. It's it's going above where it's sort of positioned to sit. Uh, and the other one is, this is just stylistic though, but it's kind of cute to swing upwards after that. Problem. I think you heard it. It's a phase issue. It's an open utah thing. It's very fixable. You just kind of scoot the envelope of the next note over until it doesn't share timing with the pitch bend. Problem solved. Same problem here, I'm just gonna sort of scoot over. Cute, great. So something that happens when you do big drops is the pitch might go down just before the consonant kicks in and this wave view display is so helpful because you can see the consonant is like here, here-ish, and then this silence is like just going into it so that's where I drop it down. See. That, that sort of fall off is more natural, I think. It's more... The pitch tuning is like, it's gonna decide a lot of how it, the style of how it sounds. Like if you want really snappy robotic pitch tuning is totally different. Um, but generally you wanna be tweaking the transition between most notes. I don't think you need to do much in the middle of a note because part of this section is like telling the listener, it is this pitch because this is just not the pitch of the note. So I mean, you can also add variation within this sort of shape. So for more shakiness or whatever. It's kind of up to you, really. Any variation you can give it without messing it up is good. I am just lazy at the moment. Uh, but vibrato, that's what we're talking about at the moment. They put it on here, here, and here, which kind of makes sense. They usually go on the end of phrases, but some singers go wacky and put them on the start, and it's kind of like a... It's not a scoop, but it's one of those starting effects. The automatic speed it sets it at is fine, honestly, but sometimes I like to go twice as fast. You can see how it gives it just a little bit of variation. You can even just stick it on notes that don't really need it, uh, like that one there. In little amounts, it's great, like subtle, but you can also crank it up if you want to make it really obvious. It's cute, I like it. Uh, something you can do with vibrato and more sampler and a few other things is you can put on this flag which modulates the volume according to the pitch. It really doesn't need that much. Like, single digits probably are fine. Uh, and it gives it a bit of, a bit of nice variation. But it needs to be subtle. Timing! Let's talk about timing. Okay, for timing it's important to know how Japanese works, but for some general things, uh, if you look at the lyrics, which I recommend you look at the lyrics for the song you're trying to cover, and uh, really look at them, you'll see that so, so deru here is like this, is like a double T, I guess, or it has the little, if I was going to write it, it would be like that, right? You've probably seen that around. We don't write the little t in the lyrics because it doesn't actually make a sound. It just kind of informs what the next consonant will behave like. So we have some glottal ends. That's the best way to manage these is to actually not worry about the t itself, but worry about the previous ending. It's more about this space here and how that sounds. Other thing you can do, velocity, very important. It should never look like this. I haven't touched it yet. Um, for slower songs, you generally want it to be lower, um, but the best thing to do is to kind of use it to highlight certain parts. God, the birds are so loud. You probably don't want to highlight the mo just because the mm doesn't need to be highlighted, but the, the suit is a good one to highlight. It's more, it's in the more. You'll hear good tuners do this, basically. Uh, it also adds to the rhythm of the singing. It just makes it, it's so much better. It's so important. I would argue it's almost as important as the pitch tuning. 
Okay, this is something people don't really talk about. Shut up. It's the breath component changes a lot, over, even over single notes. And the good thing is, I think this bank has what I'm thinking of. Uh, unfortunately, there's already fry on this note. Um, AI banks are weird and they can just do both. But it wants more breath on this. Like, instead of yo, it wants like a hyo sound. So one really stupid way to do it is to just change the lyric. But that works, right? It works. I'm not crazy, am I? Like, that looks- that sounds pretty good. You might just have to change the timing. If people who are listening know the song, they won't care if you actually have different lyrics in here. The important thing is getting it to sound good. You see what I mean? Okay, and breaths, also huge. The thing with resamplers is they're not really made to handle breath samples very well, so you kind of want to swap to a resampler that does better, like macros. Like that's, that's so good. Even here, because it's such a big breath component in the hyo, you may as well just use a breath-oriented resampler. Great, brilliant, lovely, moving on. Okay, these upwards endings are stylistic, but I do gotta admit they sound good. And the best way to do them in Utah is if you have that ending note already, you just like crank it up. Uh, let's try and give it an actual pitch component here. The problem is, that means it's gonna start using the sample from up here instead of down here. And it makes it weird. So maybe we won't crank it quite that much. <laughs> there are some times where it's just not gonna work. Like that's kind of the sound they're going for. I don't personally use them very often, but I see them a lot and it's worth, it's like a good tool if you don't know how to end a phrase to kind of give that pitch deviation. I think you should probably pitch deviate most of your ending things just to make them a bit more spicy. Like that's more fun, you know? Oh yeah, the other point, uh, because this is like a speed version of the tutorial, uh, they didn't talk about it, but those little raises you can do in the middle of phrases and that's where they're really good. Crank it up. You'll see this kind of spike tuning a lot because it does sound good. I just think it's good not to overcook it. Something you can do that's quite good is to pair them with a very high breathiness component, which this bank doesn't have a good append for, like we're already using the software, but we can use more sampler, just crank the breath. Like those high breaks, it kind of sounds like a voice crack and it works better if you have breath component, in my humble opinion. Please don't take anything I say here as like gospel. It's just something that can sound good. It really depends on the bank and the situation. Anyway, what else? Oh yeah, uh, make contrast with the strong and the weak. Yes, if you're using world liner, you can draw a curve, but I really don't think you'd need it. And it's not really worth like many bugs and crashes that world liner tends to have. It's good to sing it to yourself. And I'm not putting the recordings in this tutorial because it's cringe, but it helps you really feel where you want to put the softer and stronger dynamics. Like, I want to make it softer on the end here. Uh, oh, by the way, don't use um, the tension flag with the tips because um, it breaks. This high range up here, if this is a male singer or generally any singers, I do this as well. I tend to go really soft up high and then chest just tends to be stronger and chest tends to be lower. So stronger notes tend to be lower down, which is why I think the concept of the kire bank, which gets stronger as it goes up, is kind of goofy. It's, it's hard to make it sound realistic and it's hard to get it to work for any genres aside from ones that require strong vocals because it's not really how you sing out of the box, I suppose you could say. Uh, so that's why I'm doing this. Another thing to do is because you have those like ghost parameters you can see, anytime you've put the tension low, put the breathiness up a bit. Like it just makes sense. These things go hand in hand. But the breath, it can be very touchy, so I would just be careful with how much you use. You see on the waveform here, this consonant section, which starts from about there, goes all the way to the start of the note. It's just, there's no pitch information, so there's no point doing like wacky pitch bends in here because it will not really show. That's a way to make it a little bit more efficient with your tuning. Again, reference a singer. Go go get Ultimate Vocal Remover. They have a great GUI. You can just download it. It works fine. Make covers of songs that you really like the singing of so you can look at the a cappella version that they've sung and study it. Put it in a spectrogram because you can see and listen. And it's so much... This is how you learn. I, okay, this is a little... This is not bragging rights, but back in high school, I did a project on vocal synth and 
I don't like how I did it. That's okay. But I emailed Celia, who I didn't know was the same person as Kiami. I just thought they were different people because I was stupid and didn't realize I was emailing one of the best like vocal synth tuners of all time. And she got back to me with an explanation of how you sort of learn these skills. And it's looking at spectrograms of acapellas. It's so helpful. You can see how long the consonants are. You can see the pitch bends. You can see the pitch bends. Like it's so useful. In terms of hearing how strong and weak it is, that's just, you just kind of hear it. Some singers do these cool changes where they move how nasal their voice is, like Queen B and Ardor both do this in different ways. And that's when having a pen is really handy because flags don't really cover nasalness as far as I can tell. And you can hear that even just by changing their tone, their pitch is consistent, the strength of the voice is consistent, but the tone changes and that gives it interest. There should be changes happening all the time. And that's why when you make your own UST and there's no tuning on it, it kind of sounds bad. And sometimes voice banks can sound really flat because there's no changes over time and that's just something you have to deal with. Anyway, I got off track, but that's how you learn these things. Like these tutorials are good, but it's better to know the principles behind it. Okay, what can I do to f improve this? Make it soft, please. No! Uh. Ah. Having a breath at the end makes sense because he's exhaling, exhaling in the middle here, so he's going to need the breath. Especially if there's lots of breathy components like this. Like, any sh or tss is going to add to how much breath you need for that phrase. And it depends person to person. So this is one thing that you kind of just have to puzzle out with quote unquote maths as to how much breath they're using and when you need to make them take another breath. Because I see things where they take a breath like every two seconds. And from experience, that makes you feel like you're gonna pass out. So it's important and it's not something that you notice straight away, but it's something that you can pay attention to after. Let's make him breathe in before so that he's not starting from a weird nothing base because I want to talk about breaths. <sighs> That's being resampled and it sounds like shit. So luckily with U on more sampler, just a lowercase U, that's the only flag. It just plays the audio file as is. Super handy. And you'll notice that there is a timing to breaths and I don't know what the previous phrase is, but it matters. And it does piss me off if this is like too close to the start. It can sound really weird. It's more. That's fine. Cause it's kind of on time, but way out like this. It's more. No, not many people do this. Take notes of your banks. This, it helps you. It helps you so much because I didn't even realize that he has options for these things. Like instead of the, f oh, I guess I can do it on the first note. It's more. Yes. Okay. So some banks, it's rare, but they have vowel samples which are just a little bit more breathy than usual. So use the tools at your disposal, and to know what tools that you, uh, are at your disposal, use the README. This is not even. A, I made this. I make them for everything. It's kind of worrying, but I just, I go through the readme that comes with the bank. I chuck it into deep L, figure it out that way. I experiment it here. I look through the otto. Oftentimes they're just not written in the readme most of the time and you have to figure it out. Okay, that concludes my tuning tutorial. So yeah, there you go. Um, goodbye.